Hi guys, Buildzoid here, and so this is hopefully going to be a relatively quick video. That's a follow-up to the Z490 Aqua Marketing video that I did about how Azrock is lying about which board was used for, for making the uh, the records that they're, they're claiming that the Aqua did um, because of uh, this guy right here. Um, yeah, um, this... This right here. So fun fact, there was actually a 15 minute version of that uh, video that I posted about the Aqua um, where I actually explained why we can clearly see um, that the retail board and the board Splave used for his records are not the same motherboard as in Azrock changed the PCB. Um, but uh, yeah, like I, I guess I, I had too much, like I guess my expectations were way too high for, for YouTube commenters because... Uh, well, this. So let's go over this. So they still used Aqua without liquid block and plastic. I mean, anybody with a pair of functioning eyes can see that Splave removed the water block. I mean, you know, and that's not the problem. I don't have a problem with the water block. I have a problem with the fact that the PCB is different. Um, uh, yellow shit is liquid rubber. You don't say. Like, I use Plasti Dip for insulating. Derbauer uses Plasti Dip. Oh, well, uh, he uses liquid rubber for insulating. I'm pretty sure this is Plasti Dip, though, because normally, well, actually, I've never tried to buy yellow liquid rubber. The fun, like, the funny thing is, at least the, the liquid rubber, I started out with liquid rubber, but the company that makes liquid rubber also makes Plasti Dip, and I basically went and, and did a comparison in the sort of, like, the physical properties that they have on the uh, for, in the specs, and I was like, wait a minute, you're, the, these are the same thing, essentially. And so I started using Plasti Div because you can get it in fun colors, whereas the liquid rubber, I think they sold only red and black. And so, yeah. Anyway, so that, that's, that's not an issue. Um, you know, if you buy a retail Aqua, you can, you can put Plasti Dip on it yourself. You can use Vaseline if you like your motherboard being disgusting. Um, and for two dim slots, you can remove them manually on your own. And see, this, this right here proves that this guy has no idea how memory channels work. Um, but that's fine. He's a YouTube commenter. I'm surprised he managed to put together... Uh, well, actually, I shouldn't rate people's grammar because I can't put together functioning sentences. But uh, th this is pretty good English by my standards. So... Yeah, uh, let's talk about why Splave's motherboard, uh, why you couldn't just remove the dim slots to get Splave's board. So the giveaway here, well, there, there's a few things, but for one thing, there's this component right here, which is like, how did that get there, right? Like, that, like that, that's like right there. There's a dim slot right there. How the hell is an inductor managing to exist in a place where a dim slot should be? That's it's very, very interesting how that got there. Um, so that's obviously one problem. But let's ignore the fact that, like, let's say you did, like, let's say we couldn't see that, that part of the motherboard. We could still tell that this is not a regular uh, aqua um, where they just removed the dim slots because of this massive gap between the memory VRM over here and the first memory slot. So the thing is, if we look at uh, Splave's, uh, you know, scores, um, he's running dual channel. Right? And um, the, the thing is, the way memory channels on motherboards work is that you have your board like this, right? And you have your four DIMM slots, and this is going to be channel one, and this is going to be channel two, or they can be in reverse. There's actually, like, there, there's no real, like, restriction on which order your channels have to be in. Um, it's, but you're generally, like, you're, you're just going to have, you know, one set of DIMM slots, and then the other set of DIMM slots be the other channel. Um, so that's the important thing here. So channel one, channel two. So right off the bat, we run into the issue of like, okay, so if we remove these two dim slots, right, um, then we get this lovely gap here. So now we have a board that looks like splaves, but we won't be physically, like we won't be able to run dual channel because we've just removed channel two from our motherboard. So that's obviously not what they did. Um, so, you know, that right off the bat proves that they had to redesign the PCB because Splave is running uh, Sp Splave is running dual channel and he only has two dim slots and there's this massive gap in here. But hey, let's say let's say the perspective on this photo is a bit weird and and th th you were actually removing dim slots. So, um so in order to get at least some amount of gap between the memory VRM over here and the actual dim slots, you'd have to remove this dim slot and you'd remove this dim slot. 
and you would never do this because it's terrible for memory overclocking. And the reason why it's terrible for memory overclocking is the Z490 Aqua, like most Z490 motherboards, uses a daisy chain memory topology, which means the memory traces basically go like this. They first, your, your trace goes, it hits the first dim slot, and then it hits the second dim slot. And the same goes for channel two. It hits the first dim slot, and then the second dim slot. And so uh, if we had a, uh, alternative uh, uh, alternative diagram of our memory here. So if we look at our trace, then we're going to have, uh, you know, the, the pin of a memory slot right here, and then we're going to have the second pin over here. And so with daisy chain motherboards, the reason why you run, uh, always use this dim slot first, right, um, is because if you put your memory stick in here, you have all of this unterminated wire hanging off of your memory trace, and that causes horrible things for signal integrity, um, and that leads to bad memory overclocking. So daisy chain motherboards, you always put your dim slot at the end of the wire, like at the end of the memory trace, so that you don't have termination problems. Um, well, don't have signal integrity issues caused by a bit of unterminated wire hanging off of your, off of your, you know, memory trace. Um, so you, you can't, so if we remove, like if you desoldered that extra dim slot, um, you'd just end up with this because you'd still have the trace inside the PCB of the board itself that, you know, unless like, let's say you had a board where the, the, the layers worked out that the, the top layer and the bottom layer were actually exposing all the memory traces. Like you could try take a box cutter to it and cut it down, right? Like you could try cut it off there, but that's generally inadvisable. And on most high-end boards, you won't be able to see all of the traces on one layer. Um, it, that's if you're, you'll be able to see any of the traces at all. Um, so yeah, that's not really an option. So you're not going to remove this dim slot because you're going to have like the, still this massive piece of wire hanging off and your, your signal integrity is still going to be garbage. Um, so the alternative would be, uh, to, you know, so basically there's no way to get the retail aqua to a not suck at memory overclocking and also have this gap right here. Right, like th this, this just isn't possible. Um, what you could try to do to try improve the memory overclocking of the Aqua is remove this dim slot and this dim slot. And the reasoning is very similar because if we look at our daisy chain again, right, we've got our uh, pins right here. And so now my pins are for some reason gigantic, which uh, is unintentional. So th there's, our, there's our dim slot pins. And so obviously if we put our memory stick down here, Right, then our signal goes like this, but we still have this unterminated piece of wire right there, and that does actually cause some signal integrity issues, which is part of the reason why, you know, like ITX and 2D motherboards, like, that, that's part of the reason why ASRock went and redesigned the memory section of the Aqua-OC, as I will now refer to it. So this is the Aqua-OC, and then there's the regular Aqua. So the Aqua-OC has a redesigned memory section, because if you take a daisy chain motherboard, this, this actually causes signal integrity issues, and... Uh, the, and essentially you end up with mer worse memory overclocking than if you just get rid of that. It also helps that if you, you know, redesign the memories, uh, memory topology to just be for two dim slots instead of four dim slots, your memory traces are just shor shorter, and that also means that your signal integrity is better because the signal has to travel less distance. Um, so essentially there's a twofold benefit to not having four dim slots, where it's one, you're removing a source of uh, interference, which is the dim slot itself, two, you're shortening the trace, so the signal has to travel less distance, therefore the signal integrity is easier to maintain. Um, so basically, um, yeah, you could try to remove this right here, but you'd still be left with a very long uh, memory trace, and that's ultimately not what ASRock did for the, the, the Z490 Aqua OC board, that they sent to Splave because there's this massive great big gap and if you only like if you remove the two you know extra daisy chain dim slots uh there wouldn't be a gap between the first dim slot and the memory vrm over here right so yeah um now funnily enough asrock has actually done uh what i just suggested with removing the extra dim slot in the past on some motherboards this is a z170 oc formula um where as you can see in like they didn't do it after the fact but in manufacturing, they actually decided to leave out the two unnecessary, like the two uh, extra dim slots to try improve the memory overclocking capability of the motherboard. Um, so yeah, you can see the missing dim slots there. So ASRock has done things like that in the past. If they had done this for the Z490 Aqua, I would have been actually relatively okay with that because yeah, sure, uh, you know, like 
you can't buy an Aqua with the, like this style of memory configuration out of the box, but if you did buy an Aqua and you were extremely committed to memory overclocking, you could go and desolder the DIMM slots yourself, right? You could do what Clueless Guy in the comment section here uh, suggested, and it would maybe actually help. I like it might, you know, theoretically, it would get you up to the same level as as the board that Splave used had it actually had that been what Azrock had actually done. Um, but it's not what they've done. And the best part is um, we have a very clear picture of the Z490 Aqua OC um, right here from another one of the overclockers that ASRock sponsors. And, uh, well, uh, you can clearly see that they didn't remove any DIMM slots. They literally redesigned the memory layout because, uh, I mean, you can already tell from Splave's picture that you know, they redesigned the memory layout because of all the things I just pointed out where it's like the, they're, the, you can't take that four DIMM layout and just desolder DIMM slots to make it work in dual channel. Like, yeah. So, you know, here here's a better picture and you can clearly see like the, the Aqua uses through hole DIMM slots. Do you see any holes here for memory sticks? No. Do you see this inductor over here? Yeah, that doesn't fit if you had four more memory slots. Um, do you see, like, this, they've literally just filled all of this space with power plane, and also the spacing on these two dims is, uh, kind of funky. Like, it's a bit wide, and I assume, like, like, there are OC boards that have done that in the past, and I'm not sure if, like, th they might have their reasons for, for memory overclocking, because that ultimately looks like you're, like, that doesn't quite look like a full dim slot worth a gap. That looks like this weird... Like, it's not quite as cramped, like, the gap isn't quite as small as you'd get on a, like, a, a regular, like, ITX board, but it's not, it doesn't look wide enough to put an extra dim slot in between. Um, so, though they might have actually done, like, done something where they still kept the original holes for the through-hole dim slots and then just... Like, that's the thing. Like, this PCB is very different. Like, already from this part right here, we can tell it is a very different PCB. So I'm not sure what's going up with going on with the gap, because normally a 2DIM board, you can put the DIMMs much closer together, but this could just be an optimization for, for better memory overclocking, right? Like, they may have their, like, they, they have their reasons for why they redesigned it the way they did. Um, so yeah, like, they, they did not use an Aqua, you can't, or, like, they didn't use a retail Aqua, it, the, the board used for the records has a completely different memory section, um, they kept everything else though, right, like, the 10 gig LAN is still there, um, the Wi-Fi card is still there, the VRM is the same, like, they kept everything from the retail Aqua except the memory section, right, which is still not okay, because it's just like, um, like, the retail board is not capable of the memory overclocks of the motherboard that was used to set those records. Um, so, yeah. And and the comment guy is, is, is just completely wrong. So, yeah. Um, you know what I find really funny about this is that ASRock actually went out of their way to design, like, a, like, OC version of the Aqua. And the Aqua is like a thousand unit run board, right? So realistically, they could have totally, in my opinion, they could have totally released a Z490 Aqua OC um, with the silly water block for a thousand dollars. And well, actually, I don't think it would sell to anybody because most people who buy a thousand dollar motherboard work on the basis of more is better. So they'd compare the 4DIM Aqua, the 4DIM Extreme, and the 2DIM Aqua, and they'd go like, uh, the other two boards have four DIMM slots. Four is a bigger number than two, therefore I am buying the, the other ones. And that's kind of the reason why we don't see a lot of two DIMM motherboards, even though, like, uh, like two DIMM OC-focused motherboards, even though, like, motherboard vendors have actually made them quite regularly, right? Like, you have the Asus Apex series, uh, Gigabyte had a bunch of SOC boards with one DIMM per channel, um... Uh, ASRock OC formulas in the past, like Z170M OC formula, uh, that's a one DIM per channel. X299 OC formula, one DIM per channel. So, like, th these boards have hit retail in the past, but, th and, and some of them haven't, like, right, like, Gigabyte's LN2 series of motherboards, those, ne like, I think there was one board in that entire series that ended up going retail, and there was, like, a hundred units of it on Newegg, and that was it. Like if you got one of them on, <laughs> if you got one of them. That was that was the only time you got a chance to buy one of them. Um, and the thing with these boards is like they just don't sell enough volume to justify making them. 
So I get that. And I, I like I still think it's cool that boards like this exist cuz they're just cool boards and I'm a huge fan of overclocking and I have nothing but, you know, the ap- utmost respect for the uh like engineering and effort that goes into designing a motherboard like this and then setting uh, you know, records with boards like this. But it's not okay to advertise your 4DIM retail board with a 2DIM that uses a completely different memory layout. That's the problem. So, yeah. Also, this guy is an idiot. Um, so, yeah. That, that's it for this video. Um, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking. Um, then I have a Patreon. You can support me there directly. There's a link to that down in the description below. And then there's also the AHOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, stickers, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. There's a link to that down in the description below as well. So that is it for the video. Thanks for watching and goodbye.